my time is short, so get on with it. You should run now. With this character's death, the threat of prophecy is severed. Restore a saved game to restore the weave of fate, or persist in the doomed world you have created. Here's the thing about that message though, it's a lie. You can beat the game, get Sunder and Keening, destroy the heart of Lorcan, and kill Dagoth Ur as long as you don't kill one truly essential NPC. And that's what we're doing today. Beating Morrowind without doing the main quest, defeating Dagoth Ur, and getting a hug from Azura without so much as hearing a whisper about the Nerevarine. We start with Jub, sweet Jub, asking for our name. Vivek is kill, that'll make sense eventually. For this playthrough we're going with a red guard because of the adrenaline rush ability. Once per day you can use this power which fortifies strength, agility, speed, and endurance by 50 points for 60 seconds, and it fortifies health by 25 points for 60 seconds. Incredibly powerful, and it should make some of the early game a bit easier. The strength buff alone is amazing for when you're over encumbered. Those 50 points translates into 250 points of carry weight. You may think I'm going to be exploiting some stuff so I can beat the game really fast at level 1, but we're actually going to be doing this in the anticipated way, the intended way. Although doing the main quest is intended, this is the intended way of beating the game if you totally screw up and kill a bunch of people you weren't supposed to. So we're not using a bunch of glitches here. The speed runs, you could kill people with lockpicks. I mean, don't worry about that. So to beat the game this way, we're going to have to get a lot of level ups. And because we'll be getting a lot of level ups, I chose major and minor skills I thought would be most useful to have boosted in the early game. Acrobatics and athletics for faster movement, block for defense, blunt just because I want a weapon skill, and mysticism for teleport. Ports. Minor skills are more trivial. Speechcraft, mercantile, sneak, security, and armor. Those are there as attribute feeders. I can train 10 levels in sneak, for instance, to guarantee a level up and 5 attribute points for agility. We're going with the lady sign for extra endurance because we're going to need as much health as possible. The earlier we can max out our endurance, the better. Being a red guard with endurance as one of my favorite stats, the other one I'm picking is agility, and the lady sign starts with 85 endurance. To maximize our health, we're going to want to get 100 endurance as soon as possible, so starting with 85 means we can have 100 endurance as early as level 4. As usual, we grab the plate off the counter, drop it, get scolded, then pick it back up to sell to Arrow for a bit of starter gold. We aren't bothering with Fargoth's hiding spot this time around because I learned of a much better source of a lot of early gold. We go to Belmor by Siltstrider, then teleport to Caldera via the Mages Guild. If we go to the building that Creeper's in, on the top floor, there's a crate with a bunch of orcish armor in it. Taking it is technically stealing, but all the orcs in this house don't give a damn. They yell at you, but you don't get a bounty. We can sell all of this to Creeper for a sweet 7k. While I'm here in Caldera, I'm gonna buy a Warhammer from Varric. It has a pretty decent enchant on it. Drain health 1 to 20 points for 30 seconds on target. It is two-handed though, so we won't be able to block with the shield while wielding it. This will just be a temporary weapon. Back in Balmora, I joined the Fighters Guild and got to training my skills. I explained the way Morrowind's leveling system works in my Marksmanship Only video, but as a quick recap, if you get 10 levels across your major and minor skills, you level up and get to allocate points to your attributes. The amount of skill ups you get over the course of that character level affects how many attribute points you get. This includes skill ups in miscellaneous skills. By training with skill trainers, we can quickly get skill ups in miscellaneous skills, guaranteeing the most attribute allocation possible. That's why I came to Flania and paid her to help me with my spear. Um, yeah. 10 levels in spear will allow me to allocate 5 points to endurance. Hmm. Subtext aside, we could talk all day about Vivek and his spear and how he... Molek Ball and had demon kids. Anyway, I'm set for endurance for this level. We'll worry about training other miscellaneous skills later. For now, we're gonna head over to the temple and buy a few useful spells. Mark and Recall so I can create fast travel points at my location on a whim, and Alm um, Civi Intervention which teleports me to the nearest tribunal temple. Very useful for getting back to civilization where I can find other means of travel like Silt Strider or Boat. While I figure out exactly how I want to go about defeating Dagoth Or, let's do some Fighters Guild quests. Aedas Fire Eye, leader of the Balmora chapter of the guild, wants me to talk to Drarain? Drarain? Drarain. Drarain Thelis about her rat problem. The Fighters Guild is basically a collective of mercenaries who will do a variety of tasks that require a bit more muscle than the average person can muster, or more muscle that the average person doesn't want to muster. Sometimes it's trivial things like killing rats that are ravaging a poor woman's collection of pillows, as any sane person would have. Other times it's killing necromancers squatting in a Dunmer stronghold, and everything in between. Our second job is to deal with some rapscallions in a nearby Quama mine. Morrowind, if you weren't aware, is weird as hell. There's an odd symbiosis between the people of Morrowind and the Quama. What are Quama? Honestly, I don't know. Bugs, I guess? They have a social structure much like ants, queens, workers, soldiers, hive mind sort of stuff. They're mostly non-aggressive, excluding the warriors. What a surprise. 
but miners who have acclimated themselves to the colony who smell like the colony are viewed as members of the colony by the Kwama. As a result, the Kwama don't attack them, and the miners can even collect Kwama eggs with impunity. They can even freely harvest the juvenile Kwama without angering the hive. The mine isn't a stone mine, it's a farm. Kwama eggs are the primary resource extracted, but there's also scrib jelly, jerky, and cuddle to use as food or alchemy ingredients. The goal is to collect enough eggs to keep the queen's throughput at optimal levels without taking too much as to agitate the colony. Long story short, there are some people in the Shulk egg mine poaching Kwama eggs. And I don't mean prepping them for breakfast, they're poachers, like animal poachers. The mine's not overrun with line cooks. These poachers, former miners, are interfering with Dram Barrow's profits, so they gotta die. I guess Marwin ain't that different after all. <clears throat> Poacher's dead, and we get paid 100 gold for our work. What the hell? No wonder why people poach. I risk my life for 100 gold, really? Well, our next job is to deal with some Telvani spies at a different mine, an ebony mine outside Caldera. This is an actual mine, but before we do that, I know of a really easy way to get a really good weapon. Near the Kwama mine, where we just killed a few people, is another mine. The Vassar did not cave. It's also an ebony mine. If we find it, we can- whoop, Dark Brotherhood. Free armor. Dope. Anyway, this cave was considered missing by House Hlalu, and the house members will pay well for information about its location. Some pay better than others. Drambero, the same guy who owned that Kwama mine we killed those poachers in, pays the best. In the haunted house atop the St. Olm's Canton in Vivek City, behind a locked door we can open with a scroll of Onduce's unhinging, hides Drambero. If we tell him where the lost mine is, he'll offer us a weapon of our choosing. You might think I'd choose the blunt weapon, since blunt is my major skill weapon type. But what he'd give us is a two-handed staff. I don't want a staff. So I went for the short blade. But this is no regular short blade. This is a Daedric Wakizashi. This quest literally rewards you with a Daedric weapon of your choosing just for finding a hole in the side of a mountain. Of course, we're going to be missing 10 ways to Sunday with this weapon, but when it does hit, it'll be strong. Remember, barely anything in Morrowind scales with level. Whether we did this quest at level 1 or level 30 doesn't matter. The reward is the same. So we get a Daedric weapon just for going into a mine not that far away from where you start the game. Alright, let's go finish up with those Tovani spies. Back in Caldera, I stopped by Varric Germain and sold some Kwama eggs I poached because, I mean, who's gonna stop me? <laughs> the poachers aren't gonna stop me, I killed them. While I'm here, I'm gonna buy a shield. You can't actively block in Morrowind like you can in Oblivion or Skyrim. Instead, you have a random chance to block based on this equation. There you go. But even if it's a low chance, it's better than no chance, so let's wear a shield. Also, even if you're using two-handed weapons, you get the armor bonus of the shield. You can't block with it, but it still provides some damage mitigation, so it doesn't hurt to have. Unless it's weighing you down, then, then don't use it, because then you can't move. On the way into the mine, we run into a Bosmer named Alvaleg. He actually offers training in Marksman, Sneak, and Block, but if you mention the Telvani agents, he attacks because he's one of them. Oh my god, was I this annoying in my last run? Jesus, I can't catch up to the bastard. Aha, cornered. This guy looks familiar, but I can't place it. Paul Giamatti? Some high octane combat, huh? Screw it. Hammer time. I'm gonna have to buy some short blade training before that Wakazashi's any good. That was the first agent, but there's three more. While exploring the mining camp, I learned from a note in the guards barracks that this mine is operated with slave labor. Unsurprising in Morrowind, but when I entered one of these slaves' quarters, I found another note outlining the camp's rules. No talking after sundown or during feedings like they're cattle. And to deter property damage, the slavers are threatening to double shifts for everyone if only one person is guilty of scratching up their bedposts. I don't like it. Not that being kind slavers would make it much better. They're still slavers at the end of the day. I did find a key in one of their buildings, however. Right here on the table. Time to free some slaves, methinks. Dalina, go free. Cassina, go free. And within the mine, Gilm, Nisha, Kazara, Enora, go free. I can't help you leave the camp, but I've at least given you a chance. Best of luck. The rest of the Telvani agents aren't actually within the camp. They're in the cavern we killed the Bosmer in front of. It, admittedly, that's kind of obvious in, in retrospect. As soon as we enter, we get swarmed by all three of them. And one of them is a Tuscan Raider. The short blade would be a liability here, so I went a smash in with the hammer instead. For the last guy, the strongest one, I'm going to use Adrenaline Rush and beat him to a pulp. Check out how much faster those 50 points of speed makes us. It's not unnoticeable and it's really fun. End of you, sweat. <laughs> 400 gold. I just killed four people, and all you're paying me is 400 gold. How much are you charging the clients? 
How much is being taken out as administrative fees? Our next job is to get a code book from Sotilde, a member of the Thieves Guild. She plays dumb at first, but a little bribery gets her talking, and she hands over the code book with ease. Now, I think it's time to get more training. The House Hlalu Manor in Balmora is home to several skill trainers, not the least of which is Nyleno Dorvain, who can teach us a thing or two about short blades. You see, all this Fighter's Guild stuff leveled up enough of my major and minor skills that I'm ready to get a character level, but I want to optimize my attributes beforehand. I already guaranteed 5 points for endurance. By learning short blade, I'll get 5 to speed. Upstairs is Boner Androni, who I actually misspelled as Boner Androni, so I'm just gonna call him Boner. He can train our marksman levels. It's a miscellaneous skill this time around, so it doesn't affect our overall level, but leveling it can guarantee 5 points to agility. Also, I bought a master lockpick and probe from Nileno. Almost forgot to mention that. We'll need those later. Trust me. As you can see, after resting in a bed, we can allocate 5 points to agility, speed, and endurance. Agility improves our accuracy, endurance affects how much health we get upon level up, one tenth of our endurance level is added to health, and speed affects our... our speed. Next for the Fighters Guild, they want us to collect some debt money. <sighs> you know what? This ain't the high adventure I was looking for when I joined the guild. How's about we go hedge knight and find our own glory? In the Shea Gorad region of Vardenfell, in the northern reaches of the land, far to the west of Dagenfell, there lies a small ancestral tomb, the Dresden Ancestral Tomb. Within the tomb is a vampire who, whoa, lady, calm down, uh, 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 hammer, hit, hit her with the hammer. Oh, that's not a lot of damage at all. Um, I might be underprepared for this. Oh my god, she's bouncing away from me like we have the same magnetic polarity. You know, I have some Sujama on me. Some Mazda, too. Could drink that for a boost of strength. 220 strength. We'll still be inaccurate, but damn, is it gonna hurt when we actually hit. Ooh, that was a meaty hit right there. Yes, three hits in a row. Now she's dead. Time to loot her corpse. So what do we come here for? Marara's Ring. Reflect 20%, resist normal weapons 40%, and fortify acrobatics 10 points. Not a bad piece of jewelry, if you ask me. Oh my god, come on, you dumb Daedric butter knife. Hit the pterodactyl. Fine, hammer. Hit it. What's hit? A rat? Really? Get out of here. Oh, well, I one-shot that. I did it! Mightiest knight in all of Tamriel. Even further west is the Daedric ruins of Asurderapal. Within these ruins is a shrine to the Daedric prince Malakath. He used to be Trenimac before Boethia ate him and shot him out. Now he's Malakath. That's not a joke. That's the that's the lore. We have some orcs in here who attack us on sight. Much like every other enemy, I tried to kill the first one with the Wakazashi, but soon realized how futile that was and instead swapped over to an adrenaline-fueled hammer rampage. This little dance seems to work well. Hold a charge attack, run in and swing, then run out before the enemy can swing in return. Sure, I might be able to roll the dice and get a dodge if they actually attack me, but if their weapon doesn't even meet my hitbox, there won't be an accuracy check to begin with. You see, Marwin's combat isn't just dice rolls. There's a bit of maneuvering involved. You probably don't actually have to do it. You probably shouldn't even be here at this level. I'm pretty sure these enemies are like level 15, 16, and 17. I'm level what? Three, two, three, something like that. We got some orcish armor here. I could either sell it or wear it. It is heavy. Well, technically it's medium armor, but it weighs a lot. I'll think about it. Whoa, what killed me? Is it this smoke stuff? Yeah, it must be. Hmm, no. What the hell's happening? Is there an enemy sniping me from behind this wall? You will die here. No. Did an orc clip through the floor? Yeah, console commands, I'm cheating. Well, well I, I gotta check, just, to, I gotta make sure. Nope, nothing down here. Mm. Let me try leaving and reloading the area. Whoa, I just got launched. Wait a minute. Oh, it's the adrenaline rush buff. I'm an idiot. It fortifies health by 25 points, so I lose that health when the buff wears off. The way the buff works is if you have 50 health and then you fortify by another 50 points and you have 100 health and then you take 50 points of damage, you don't take the fortified health health as damage, you take your base health as damage. So you'll have 50 health remaining, but that's your fortified health. When the fortify goes away, you lose that 50 points and you have zero health because your main amount of health was reduced to zero. So then you die. That's what's going on here. Let's actually put Fargoth's ring to use for some quick heals. There we go. Second orc, not as armor does the first, but he's a bit quicker. A few swings from the hammer does the job. Chaining those staggers is just so satisfying. Third orc is a wizard. That felt like an execution. You have summoned me. You are all the same. But perhaps you 
can be of use to me. Here we can talk to Malakath and get a quest from him. He tells us about Orain Bearclaw, a Dunmer hero whose claim to fame is built upon a foundation of lies because his deeds were actually performed by Karaz Grokar, his orcish friend, if you couldn't tell by the name. Malakath wants us to find the last of his bloodline and put an end to it because that's fair. A bit harsh, but he'll give us the helm of Orain Bearclaw if we do it. So, murder hobo hedging that away. Oh, actually, before we leave, let's take this mace. A one-handed blunt weapon with a drain fatigue effect on cast. Could be useful. If not, we could sell it. Outside the little village of Narmok is Farvin Orain killing Netches with a pair of intimidating looking fellows. He looks quite intimidating himself, actually, kitted out with Dwemer armor. This took several attempts. I tried brute forcing it, but his two friends are really strong. One's a caster, so they're always pelting you with spells, and the other one has a lot of health, so Battle of Attrition is out. I tried using the Daunting Maze to drain Farvin's fatigue at the start of the fight, but his armored clad friend beat me down before it even made a difference. On this attempt, I actually killed Farvin, and I tried healing up the damage I took from the mage but my potions weren't strong enough and I died anyway. Then I remembered. Adrenaline rush. Go berserk. I killed Farvin in two hits, the first one knocking him down to his knees. I rushed to loot him before his allies could do me in just in case I had to run away and maybe drop aggro. I threw on Farvin's Dwemer armor, beat down his samurai looking friend with a few good swings of my warhammer, then blasted the mage with a single swipe. Adrenaline rush is busted. I love it. As much as I'd love to keep all the Dwemer and Orcish armor I get from these guys, it's just way too heavy to be viable right now. But what I can do is wait a day and recast Adrenaline Rush for the extra carry capacity from the strength until I return to town and sell the loot. But before we do that, let's return to Malakath and let him know the deed is done. I placed a mark at his shrine, so getting back is no problem. He's pleased with our actions and rewards us with the Helm of Orain Bearclaw, a heavy armor helmet that fortifies both agility and endurance by 40 points each. Super strong. Stupidly strong, actually. We could sell it for 125,000 gold, but that'd be dumb. Wear it proudly, and let it serve as a reminder of what really happened. Back in Caldera with Creeper, I sold some of the loot that I got, including the Orcish armor, and I'm now sitting at a healthy 17k. And we're gonna need all that gold for the forthcoming training montage. Another level, 5 points to agility, endurance, and intelligence. Why intelligence? Well, intelligence governs security, and the more intelligence we have, the better our chances are at picking locks. This will be important later. Also, it gives us more magicka for casting mark and recall. Instead of dealing with security, I could use alteration and make a 100 points unlock spell, but then I'd have to train up alteration a bit so the cast chance would be reasonable, and alteration is governed by willpower, not by intelligence, and I want to get some extra magicka for casting mark and recall, so this just seems like the better option. Our next piece of strong gear, two pieces actually, is in the Caverns of Ilunibi. This place should sound familiar to you if you've done the main quest or if you've watched my marksmanship only video. During the main quest, you have to come here and kill Dagoth Gares, clearing out the Sixth House cult's presence in this cave. But if you come here before advancing that far in the main quest, it's just a cave filled with ash slaves and such. Gares ain't here. But at the end of the dungeon where you would normally fight Dagoth Gares and find a bunch of loot is something I never knew about. Let me drink this potion of light I found somewhere. I'm glad I held on to it because the loot here is hard to see. Behind this coffin is a pair of gauntlets, the Fists of Randagulf. The right gauntlet fortifies strength by 20 points, the left fortifies agility by 20 points. Not only does the right gauntlet make our weapons hit harder, but it lets us carry 100 more points worth of stuff. The left makes us more likely to hit and less likely to be hit. We're only level 3 right now and we have a constant 120 agility. Eh, Morrowind. Let's get some more broken equipment, yeah? First, let me introduce you to the best margin in the game. This mud crab. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. He's got 10,000 gold. Getting to him is way more inconvenient than Creeper, but it's a lot easier to sell him loot without having to constantly shuffle gear between him and you to get the most out of each sale. I only have cheap stuff to sell to him right now, the general loot I grabbed in Illunibi, but I'll leave a mark here since we'll need his large gold stores soon enough. The next dungeon we're gonna sack is Namu, a little cavern west of Sadrith Mora along the coast of Vardenfell before you hit the Oceanic Archipelago to the east. Upon entering, we're immediately attacked, and even though we're stacked with agility gear, this dumbass Daedric Wakazashi just won't hit. Instead, I used my new two-handed hammer, the Sixth House Bell that you can get from Illunibi, to cave this lady's skull in. There. Adrenaline rush time. Yeah, there we go. Daedric Wakazashi, killing it. Not, not that much of a dumbass. Oh my god. Ripping through all these schmucks, you see a dude walk in with a glowing bear skull on his head, and your first reaction is to jump him? Are you kidding me? So the guy we're looking to kill is at the top of these precarious bridges and narrow walkways. And here he is. Gotta be careful fighting him though. I'm moving really fast and have little room to strafe. I might be able to outdamage him before he... Oh, well. Oh, he's still alive. Oh. 
Okay, now he's dead. On his corpse is the Ring of the Wind, a ring that fortifies agility by 30 points. A constant effect, by the way. All these pieces of gear I'm collecting have had constant effects. These aren't on cast effects. As long as I'm wearing the gear, I get the buff. There's another guy in here, John Hawker, at the top of those walkways who will give us some gauntlets in exchange for two Divine Intervention Scrolls, Xenathar's Warning and Xenathar's Wiles. They aren't all that exciting, who cares. Here we are back in Balmora, our home base, pretty much. Ready to level up again. But first I had to zip around to the local trainers so I could ensure I'd get five points to endurance, speed, and intelligence. With this level, I now have maximum endurance. Every level will now increase my health by 10 points. I'll need over 200 points of health to beat the game. You'll understand why soon enough. I did a second run around the city to the trainers, making sure to train in some major and minor skills as well to get me to level five. I've been training security for intelligence attributes, and since that's a major skill, 10 security training sessions gets me a character level. This time we're allocating points to strength, intelligence, and speed. The next dungeon we'll be extracting powerful gear from is a Daedric Ruins to Molag Bal, southwest of Kul, a Shal Mawaya. Within the dungeon is a Dunmer by the name of Gordel. He's decked out in ebony gear and has a Daedric War Axe. Expensive loot to say the least, and I need all the gold I can find. Training gets very expensive the higher your levels get. I literally get the drop on him and immediately focus on killing his Bone Lord before I get cursed or diseased. The last thing I need is something reducing my strength. With all the agility buffs, even though my short blade skill is only 33, the fight wasn't all that bad. Considering he was wearing a bunch of ebony armor, I'd say we did pretty... Why am I not wearing pants? I'm taking this ebony armor for myself, and I'll sell all the pieces I have no use for. Unfortunately, my strength was sapped a bit, but fortunately, we have adrenaline rush, so it's not a huge problem. You might think I only came here for the armor, but actually hidden away in the upper reaches of this dungeon is a little alcove with Daedric darts and a Daedric mace. A one-handed Daedric weapon that aligns with one of my major skills. How wonderful. Surely I won't replace it. So I did the old creeper shuffle, but at the mud crab this time to offload a ton of this loot. It took a while since I was over encumbered and kept getting attacked while waiting, but the scribs wouldn't actually attack me, so I couldn't get over to them because I couldn't move. They just kept wandering nearby outside of my range, so I couldn't kill them. Eventually it did wander over to me and I killed it. And then when I waited again, another scrib showed up. And honestly, there's something really silly about casting adrenaline rush just to kill a scrib. After selling everything, I walked away with a hefty sum of 137,000 gold. Who needs the fighters guild to make money? Now to cure this disease. Praying at a shrine does the trick, you just gotta figure out how to get to one when you're over encumbered. I just used divine intervention, ended up in Ebonheart, and then used adrenaline rush to get to the altar. Easy peasy. All right, more training. It's so great that Balmora is full of skill trainers. Level six, and we'll help ourselves to five points in strength, agility, and speed. Level seven, strength, intelligence, and willpower. Level eight, strength, intelligence, agility. Level nine, strength, agility, speed. What took about 10 seconds to explain took about 20 minutes of running around Balmora to all the trainers, so to break up the monotony, I'm gonna go venture beyond the ghost gate. I'm only level nine, but I'm an efficient level nine with busted gear. The enemies across the wall, they don't stand a chance. Look, a hunger, creepy little bastards. Oh, not so tough when your own paralyzed spells get reflected, huh? If you're curious, one of the skills I trained for intelligence was alchemy. And with alchemy, you can make levitate potions. You can buy racer plumes and coda flowers from Sien Sintiev in Aldrun. You can actually use alchemy to break this game completely, literally getting Keening and Sunder at level one and beating the game that way just by using alchemy to exploit the ridiculousness of fortify potions. I'll have a video up about that eventually. So there are several Ash Vampires behind the Ghost Gate, and each one you kill weakens Dagoth Ur slightly. You only have to kill two to get your hands on Sunder and Kaining, but why not kill an extra few? Shake things up a bit, test how we're doing. Here we are in Endusel, Kagranax study. As soon as we enter, we're attacked by a Dramora Lord who dies pretty easily, dropping nothing but a heart and a Dwarven Battle Axe. No Daedric armor, unfortunately, which shouldn't be too surprising, honestly, even in later installments of the Elder Scrolls games. Killing a Daedra that's been summoned into Tamriel doesn't get you Daedric gear. However, Daedric gear in Morrowind is way more rare than it would be in, say, Skyrim, where you can just craft it. If I'm not mistaken, most pieces have a single instance throughout the entire game. But if you want to get the whole set really fast, except for the helmet, you could just kill Devaith Fear and get it that way. But then you lock yourself out of the main quest, which really doesn't matter right now. So we could probably go do that, but Devaith Fear is cool. So we'll leave him alone. Anyway, there's a squid guy in this dungeon as well. I wouldn't say he's trivial, but I'm tanky enough to withstand several attacks from him. Oh, hey, a Daedroth. They're really thin in Morrowind. Like, 
This looks like a dude in a costume, or something you'd see on the wall of an Egyptian tomb. So the boss of this dungeon is Dagoth Endus, and I pretty much just bullied him to death. It, it felt kind of unfair, but screw him. So let's sell some loot to Creeper, and now back beyond the gate. Holy moly. Uh, go away beasts. I don't have any treats. Back to Belmora, running from trainer to trainer to get some levels. Another level, level 10, strength, agility, and speed. 11, strength, agility, speed. 12, strength, agility, speed. 13, strength, agility, and speed. 14, strength, agility, speed. We've now maxed out both strength and agility. 100 in each. Time to move on to some other attributes. 15, intelligence, willpower, and speed. 16, intelligence, willpower, speed. 17, intelligence, willpower, and personality. Why personality? Because Caius Cosades, I believe it's pronounced Cosades, not Cosades, because Imperial, Latin, whatever. He can train speechcraft, and I needed 10 minor skill level ups to level up, so I just taught speechcraft. 18, intelligence, willpower, and personality. 19, intelligence, willpower, and one to luck. You can never allocate more than one point to luck, and I literally have zero need for personality. That's why I'm doing YouTube. So I didn't bother training any of those skills. And finally, level 20. Intelligence, willpower, and one to luck. By the way, I do not recommend playing Marwin like this. Not only does it suck the life out of the game, but you become way too powerful way too fast. Being perfectly optimal breaks the game in a way that's not as fun as, say, making overpowered spells and enchants. But this is for YouTube. I'm not here to have fun. Now that I'm level 20, I can beat the game. First, I want to get a Daedric Longsword. In the St. Ohm's sewers, there's an orc standing outside a door. Kill her and go inside, and you'll be met with a shrine to Mayrun's Dagon. One of the enemies in the shrine is wielding the longsword we want, so the only solution is to kill her and take it. I killed her and took it. This crossbow jackass will be my first victim with the sword. My second victim will be one third of the tribunal, Vivek. You see, we never became Nerevarine. We never even started that journey. But if we want to wield Sunder and Keening and destroy the heart of Lorcan, we need Wraithguard. Vivek won't give us Wraithguard except under certain conditions, so we're just gonna have to take it from him. Vivek has a lot of health, but he's surprisingly easy to kill. All he does is cast spells, which are really easy to dodge, and growl like a tiger. You can either duck behind a pillar or strafe in one direction as he casts, then quickly switch to the other direction before it launches. If you do get hit, drink some potions. With Vivek dead, the threads of prophecy are severed or whatever, but we can take from his corpse a unique Dwemer artifact. That's not Wraithguard. It's not even technically a piece of armor we can wear. Maybe. If we could speak with a Dwemer, perhaps one who worked with Kagranak, we might be able to jury-rig this into a proper version of Wraithguard. But all the Dwemer vanished from Tamriel quite some time ago. Well, except for one. Deep within Devaith Fear's Corpusarium is the last Dwemer on Tamriel, Yegrim Bagarn. When Kagranak fiddled with the heart of Lorcan and all the Dwemer vanished, Yegrim was somewhere in oblivion, off-world, so he was unaffected. And then at some point in his life as the last Dwemer, he contracted Corporus, a divine disease spread by Dagoth Ur himself. This made Bagarn immortal, but caused his body to become bloated and mutated. He's still coherent, however. If we talk to him about the artifact, he reveals that he was one of Kagranak's master crafters. He may not have worked directly on Wraithguard, but he tells us that he could restore the artifact if only he had access to Kagranak's plan book and journals. Well, let's get him what he needs. Ironically, Kagranak's journal is in Endusel. I didn't realize that at the time, 
time, but since the place is already cleared out, we could just hop right in and grab it. Kagernak's plan book is in Terrain Wall, another vampire fortress beyond the Ghost Gate. But since we're in the neighborhood, I popped over into Odrasol to kill Dagoth Odros and grab Keening from the shrine in the tower. I'd be lying if I said the fights in here were noteworthy. I literally three shot the Golden Saint. The first hit and knocked her down. The next two were just executioner strikes. Terrain Wall had a few enemies, a lot of those noodle snoot guys, but again, we're overpowered. Who needs the Nerevarine? After killing Dagoth Turinol, I scoured the many books in the room, unable to find Kagernak's plane book. It's in the desk, hiding. Before returning to Yegrim, I popped into Veminal to grab Sunder. This is what counts for divinity these days. Why is this skeleton stronger than the vampire? It's named? Huh, I didn't know that. Back to our dwarf pal. With the books in hand, Yegrim Bagaran is able to activate Wraithguard, but he refuses to do it unless we're in perfect health. When we equip the jury-rigged version of Wraithguard, we don't just take 217 points worth of damage, we lose 217 points of health. Gone. Permanently. We literally go from 243 hit points to 26. To beat the game this way, you must be level 20, at least, otherwise Jaeger won't do this for you, and you need enough hit points to survive equipping Wraithguard. This is why getting Endurance so high so early was so important. But we did it. We got Wraithguard without doing the main quest. We aren't Nerevarine. We aren't Hortators. We never met the Ashlanders. Hell, we spent most of our time in Belmora. Let's go kill a god. The interesting thing about this version of Wraithguard is that it's a left-handed gauntlet instead of a right-handed one. So I don't know how it protects us from the powers of Sunder and Keening since we're holding them in our right hand, but uh, magic. The enchantments it gives are the same though. Good thing too, since we need all the defenses we can get, considering we have like no health. And it's a good thing Sunder is such a strong hammer that can pretty much one-shot everything in this dungeon leading up to Dagoth Ur. Now let me let you in on a little secret. I didn't realize I had 26 health while running through this dungeon. I thought the permanent health loss thing was a bug that OpenMW patched, but I believe it's a bug that the Marwind patch patches, but OpenMW is different. So I kind of Mr. Magood my way through this place just to get obliterated by a single hit from Daddy Ur. Second time around, I didn't chat with Ur, and I just smashed him into the dirt before he could get a spell off. What a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocent. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? There is no escape. The bitter, no recall or intervention can work in this place. Come, lay down your weapons. It is not too late for my mercy. God damn, I'm so fast. I should have got the boots of blinding speed. That would have been ridiculous. And that's Morrowind without the main quest. As I said earlier in the video, there's only one truly essential NPC in this game, Yegrim Bagarn. You can kill everyone else and still beat the game, as long as our pal Yegrim Bagarn remains friendly. And actually, if you abuse alchemy, you, you can kill him too, but well, that's, that's for a different video. What the? Oh, Adrenaline Rush wore off. That's the danger of the Fortify health buff, I guess. Well, Vivek is kill is canonically dead. He trained too hard.